Mahendra, good evening. Sir, good evening. Good evening. So last time you were busy in operation? Uh, no, sir. Just uh, my son's exam were over. So I went just outside. Monday okay. or next day or holiday, right? Wednesday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine, fine. So today we are having uh, two cases. Hmm. So let us see. Huh? Yes, yeah, sir. So all uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, are uh, uh, localized? Look, no, yeah, last time we had a localized. Okay, locally. Now, yeah, uh, this time we have got. Uh, uh this thing uh what you say Thick, uh, uh, sir, uh, local, don't, don't... locally advanced locally Thick, advanced. okay okay huh? okay, okay. So.
गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर गीते गुड इवनिंग सर सो टुडे अगेन वी हैव गॉट टू केसेस लोकली एडवांस जस्ट वेट फॉर लेट अस वेट फॉर 5 मिनट्स 10 मिनट्स डॉक्टर गणेश बक्षी विल जॉइन देन वी विल स्टार्ट महेंद्र इज ऑलरेडी देयर यस सर गीते सर गुड इवनिंग महेंद्र यार गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग भाई I think today there was some uh, ISU program also, correct? Hmm. Hmm. Hope. Oh. Indian School of Urology. They also had uh, some learning program. I, if I'm not mistaken. Same mistake. time. Same time. No, seven. It was I think seven to eight thirty. Maybe I don't know, sir. या इट्स सेवन सेवन टू एट थर्टी हाँ बोल क्या वो दैट में भी प्रॉब्लम है दैट दीपक दुबे सर प्रोग्राम राइट सर स्टिक्चर ही हो रहा था हाँ स्टिक्चर ही रहता है
Ganesh Bakshi has joined. No, sir. No, sir. Janendra Sharma, sir, has joined. Ah, uh, to. Tell them to make him host, no? I'll, I'll already, I'll already call, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, Gorang Sasha, just I spoke with the uh, Bakshi sir, so he will be joining in uh, five ten minutes. He just reached home. No problem. So as yeah. soon as I will just wait for two three minutes, and then we will start. Last time we have discussed uh, about the uh, basic history of CA prostate. As last class is uh, localized shear prostate, so if, if possible, we will uh, uh, try to bypass this part so that we'll discuss uh, localized uh, locally advanced shear prostate in detail. Correct, correct. So Fine, history sir. we will we will history, history we will not go too much in detail. To locally advanced can be discussed, but routine history like uh, uh, general history what we we'll ask for. Shear prostate can be avoided. Uh, Achin, who is presenting today? Uh, Swastik is on his way to present, sir. I and Miraj are answering. Dr. Viraj. Dr. Viraj? Y yes. But where is Achin? I mean, where is Para, uh, the thing? Swastik? He, he just left the hospital, is about to join him. Sir.
so we can start slowly sir we are just waiting for swastik to share the screen and start it yeah in 1 to minutes you will start sir then you who is the, you will start ajay uh, i don't have swastik the printer with me with swastik only sir is about to start only is about to log in Let's okay talk okay. to him just now so samkit is answering today meraj is there dr meraj acha dr meraj good evening sir i am also good evening okay hello hello So, uh, Gita sir, I, I guess we have uh, covered yesterday, uh, last uh, Tuesday, all aspects of uh, history taking examination. Majority part is uh, covered as basic history. It is already covered. So we will uh, th uh, run through the history part whenever it is very important. At that point, only we can discuss some one or two uh, history related to the locally advanced case. this is and uh, directly entered into the evaluation like it's like that so, so mahendra when What today you just anything is uh, missing in the history is yeah. mahendra today you see in the history and whatever you want to and gnanendra is also there so both of you can you know add something yeah. if it is necessary okay yeah so okay fine fine so whoever is presenting just uh, you present like that that you do not diagnosis and you are just focusing on the history examination don't get biased that you know the diagnosis achin kya ho gaya मैं चेक करता एक बार डॉक्टर बक्सी सर है जॉइन सर
this swasti who is presenting the case he has to yeah Okay, Swastik has joined. Dr. S. K. Pal has joined. I don't think so, sir. There's somebody named S. K. Pal has joined, sir. I don't know. It's the same, sir. Where? S. K. Pal. Mahendra Pal has joined, sir. Bas, bas. So, sir, good evening. Hi, Mahendra. One, 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 only Mahendra Pal is sufficient, sir. Bas, Mahendra. Why is he over there? I think Doctor S. K. Pal has joined. I'm. Present one, present. Sir, Swastik is presenting. And we can... Swastik is presenting. Look, you have no time for that. No. Sir, that, okay. sir, that is Dr. Harish Paul, not S.K. Paul. No, when S.K. Paul is joined. I am not sure. Huh, S.K. Paul also is Yes. Let's see, sir. We start. Yes, sir. Good yeah. evening. Ah, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, we are presenting cases on carcinoma uh, prostate locally advanced. Ah, uh, first scenario: a gentleman, seventy-eight years of age, resident of Mumbai, came with complaints of difficulty in passing urine for last three months. So, your Perfect. screen is not seen. So I think put slide in uh, slideshow mode. Sir, so it is in slideshow mode, sir. So then it's sharing, sir. It is saying so, showing that you you are say screen is sharing. I can see, but it's hung up on the first line. Now I can see. Just put it yes, on slide slideshow mode. Yes, sir. It is on slideshow mode, sir. Okay. There was a time that was logging on. So are I, sir? Ah, RR, we can see. You can unmute Dr. S. K. Pal. I made him call, sir. Yeah, okay. Miraj, let us go pass in the history. So this is a history. So how you will elaborate? I will further ask about the history of uh, uh, like in passing in the sense in the voiding symptoms and the storage symptoms. I will ask that is uh, whether there is frequency urgency nocturia and whether there is any uh, incomplete uh, voiding and intermittent intermittent hesitancy straining or there is any uh, poor stream. And uh, I will also ask if there's any associated hematuria, if there's hematuria, whether it is initial or it is complete all through, or it is final. And I will also ask if there is any history of any burning maturation, any suprapubic pain, any flank pain, any fever with chills, and any vomiting and nausea, any decreased urine output, and of the face or uh, of the uh, or fetal edema. And I will also ask if uh, there is any history of uh, uh, um, kind of Difficulty, uh, decrease sensation while passing urine, and uh, uh, and any back back pain, any history of uh, trauma to the back, any cognitive impairment, and uh, uh, other features, any constipation is there or any erectile dysfunction is there. Then I would also ask uh, if there is uh, any uh, <laughs> in uh, retracting the previous any infections uh, recently, uh, any any infection, any history of history of pituria. History of uh, uh, history of any uh, instrumentation uh, in the past history. 
history of uh, instrumentation, history of any URPs, any previous biopsies which have been done uh, for the prostate, any uh, dysuria if it is there, uh, if uh, any uh, uh, TURP has been done, uh, uh, any, uh, uh, any rectal uh, difficulty in defecation, any bleeding per rectum or uh, any generalized lymphadenopathy. Or uh, etc. Then I will also yes. Sir. I will ask if he has taken any alpha any similar history in the past. If he has a, a, taken any alpha blocker in the past, undergone any treatments in the past for the same. And uh, I will ask if he has any history of diabetes, of hypertension, of uh, race creat a CKD or any other comorbidities. Uh, any neurological deficits, where uh, any um, any sensory or uh, uh, deficits, etc. And uh, I will also ask the uh, past drug history of alpha blockers or anticholinergic. or anticholinergic. Mirad, you are repeating the history again and again. I think you have done you know uh, too many things. So anyway, Achin, do you want to add anything, or otherwise we'll go ahead. Only on history of acute urinary retention, sir, previously, and any history of any blood thinner intake. Nothing more. Okay. Fine. So, just uh, to elaborate, how, uh, what are the important drugs uh, achieved, which are uh, you will ask for this urinary lower intake symptoms? Uh, whether uh, he has been taking alpha blockers or 5 alpha reductase inhibitors combination, and if he's taking, what's the duration of intake, and any history of any blood thinners? And uh, any history of any, sir, uh, uh, anti muscarinic drugs for uh, uh, storage symptoms. <laughs> and one history of erectile function also has to be taken. I can interrupt. What Gauram, sir, wants to know is what are the medications you will ask in the history which can cause difficulty in passing urine? Exactly. Uh, so, so uh, just. Uh, Achil, just I want to just uh, guide you. Listen question carefully. Okay, don't uh, give a free plan answers. Yes. Okay, when you when Dhan Sattar asked about the drug history, you started asking uh, the alpha blocker. Alpha blocker releases the uh, optative LUTS. Doesn't cause, right? Yes. Sir. So at once only you are on the wrong page actually. So listen, answer the question carefully. If you want to take five seconds, two seconds, take your time, but answer correctly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. History, history of any antipsychotics uh, that could precipitate uh, lots. Okay, so uh, I'll speak. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Next slide. So, patient is apparently assumed 23 months back when he started developing difficulty in passing urine, as in poor flow, increased frequency every one to two hours with hesitancy and urgency, with sense of incomplete voiding. It was insidious in offset, gradually progressive, with no specific aggravating and delivery factors. It was associated with straining passing urine and straining during passing urine and nocturia four times per night. IPS score was 22 out of 35 and IIEF score was 70. Your screen is not changing, huh? Sir. Change, sir. No, here it is not changing. Delayed, I said. Relax, Chris. So his video is uh, uh, not interrupting. I think some problem in the taking the slide. Oh, sir, I Changed it. I'll try. Uh, so, I'll log out, log in. So, I have. Uh, so, uh, all the students. Uh, can you get the slides? Any, suspect, any, any case rela related to the bladder outlet obstruction intravascular. So, there are only three to four differential diagnoses in this age. That is benign enlargement of the prostate, malignant enlargement of the prostate with stone, without stone. So history pertaining to the outlet obstruction, history pertaining to the uh, outlet obstruction causing the back pressure changes, 
history pertaining to the malignancy involving the surrounding structure history pertaining to the malignancy involving the distant metastasis and if the age is slightly in 50 or uh, 50 then you may involve a uh, stricture urethrain that also so and history of drugs history of uh, operations in the past in medical comorbidities the set protocol so if you want to go uh, within a short period from history to the diagnosis you should have a written written thing in your mind i i am going to ask these four symptoms for so and so diagnosis i am going to ask these four symptoms for so and so diagnosis every time i am telling because if you waste this time in, the, in at this stage so you will not reach to the diagnosis so that that is the request to all the students when you present the case in exam you should be ready Uh, to go through the uh, history and uh, physical examination and up to the diagnosis in short period of time otherwise you will waste your time i think uh, this was told last time also yes sir every 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 class i am telling same thing so that way they will not agree uh, what you all do is uh, when i was doing surgery there were cassettes of dr ghansham vaidya so somewhere if you please listen on the youtube or somewhere any case any one case and you will get an idea how to take a, or how to arrange or talk your presentation exactly these are readily available on youtube today i think dr ghansham bhai the prasthik has joined <laughs> स्ट्रीमेंटी you okay na we we consider done right okay sir so in the negative history there was no history of burning duration no history of abdominal pain or fever there was no history of vomiting no history of hematuria lithuria no history of facial puffiness exertional breathlessness lower limb edema no history of back ache bony pain or weight loss no history of previous instrumentation or tension going ahead sir in the past history patient is a known case of hypertension since 20 years he takes tablet telma That is, tell me, start from forty mg once daily in the morning. No history of previous surgeries. Uh, in family history, there is no history of any known malignancies in the family or malignancy-related deaths in the family. Again, your slides are not changing. Slides can change, sir. Can you can you do it manually? So I am doing it, sir, manually only, sir. Yes, sir. No, do one thing. You don't uh, you don't uh, put on a slide show. I just should try just doing a uh, without slide show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is not on slide show. He needs to make a slide show. So can can you see the slide, sir? Yeah. Right. Now it's changing. Sir, बोल रहे हैं ना वैसे एक नीचे slide show रहता है वो कर दो. Yes, sir. I have done that, sir. Hmm. Now you are in yes. past history, family history, right? Yes, sir. I have changed the slide, sir. इसको स्लाइड शो नहीं बोलते ऊपर एक ऊपर देखो पावर पॉइंट में ऊपर के लाइन में होम में स्लाइड शो है चार्जिंग नाइनटी परसेंट जहाँ लिखा है उसके बाजू में जो है उसको क्लिक करो सर दैट इज सर क्लिक सर दैट इज क्लिक सर तो अभी क्या जोर से दबाओ फिर सर डन सर सर इट्स ऑन द फुल स्क्रीन सर ऑन माय कंप्यूटर सर बिल्कुल ऐसा होता नहीं कभी सर मे बी व्हाइल ही वाज प्रेसिंग द मेन्यू फॉर शेयर स्क्रीन ना इज जस्ट प्रेस दिस नॉट द होल स्क्रीन सर आई हैव शेयर द स्क्रीन सर ओके वी विल गो अहेड सर चलो ठीक है ओके गो अहेड द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड चलो कंप्लीट करो हिस्ट्री बस अगेन 
हम्म नॉट इट इज कम आया सर हम्म यू आर सक्सेस यस सर पास हिस्ट्री दी पेशेंट इज अ नॉन हाइपरटेंसिव टेकिंग टेलमा 40 एमजी वंस डेली फैमिली हिस्ट्री नो हिस्ट्री ट्रेनिंग नो मेलिग्नेंसीज इन द फैमिली और मेलिग्नेंसी रिलेटेड डेथ इन द फैमिली पर्सनल हिस्ट्री डाइट वेजिटेरियन है Uh, he is a vegetarian by diet. Appetite is adequate. Bowel is regular. Bladder is altered as described before. So, in family history, may no history of any known malignancies in the family or malignancy deaths in the family. Us may kya puchha dumne? Uh, sir, uh, there, was there any uh, diagnosed malignancy? With with your first slide of that symptom, wo first slide kya hoga sir? Sir. फर्स्ट स्लाइड तो एज वाला वन लाइन स्लाइड था वो सेवेंटी एट सर सेवेंटी एट इयर ओल्ड रेसिडेंट यस सर यस विद डिफिकल्टी इन पासिंग यू इन अभी इसमें इसमें अगर तुमको स्पेसिफिक फैमिली से पूछनी है तो क्या पूछा बोलो असर मेलेनेसिस रिलेटेड टू एनी एनी मेलेनेसिस रिलेटेड टू सर कोलोनिक मेलेनेसिस इन द फैमिली � uh any uh, uh breast related malignancy like uh, there can be associations with brca1 or brca2 genes sometimes so we can ask for these uh, malignancies in family in history of these malignancies in the family sir theek hai so no history of prostate cancer bhi puch sakte ho in family yes sir okay yes Wait, wait. Come to that study immediately. Let's not waste any time. Yes, sir. I think go next slide. Yes, sir. So coming to so history part is complete, sir. Sir, on general examination, patient was conscious, uh, conscious cooperative, well oriented to time, place, and person, and moderately built and nourished. Pulse rate was eighty per beats per minute. Blood pressure was one hundred ten by eighty. Although he was hypertensive, but taking uh, tell me certain forty milligram. Respiratory rate twenty seconds per minute, a febrile. Saturation was ninety eight percent on room air. BMI is twenty two kg per meter square. Kanofsky score was eighty. There was no evidence of pallor, icterus, sinuses, scrubbing, lymphedema or lymphadenopathy or edema. There was head to toe examination, spine examination, and coffee normal. Okay. 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 With exposure from nipple to knee, inadequate room light, external genital was normal, uncircumscribed. The superficial uh, skin was retractile. Penile meatus was normal. All hernia orifice was normal. There is no palpable urethral thickening or mass. On parietal examination in same position, there was no fissure, fistula, or hemorrhoids. Anal tone was normal. Grade two prostatic enlargement. Was there with uh, which was hard in consistency. There was nodular surface on both the uh, sides, both the lobes, non-tender. Upper border can be reached and medial surface palpable. Rectal mucosa was mobile. Rectum was empty and there was no blood on the gloves. Okay. Ask how do you grade prostate on rectal examination? Hello. How do you grade the enlargement of prostate on DRE? Sir, uh, grade one, sir, we have uh, a smooth surface with uh, we can go beyond the prostate and both lobes are palpable. Uh, we can palpate both the lobes with fingers. And grade two, sir, there is uh, we can go beyond the uh, upper border of the prostate. Uh, bilaterally, sir, uh, we can go beyond, and the median surface is palpable. In grade three. The medial sulcus is obliterated, and we can still go uh, up to the upper border. Grade four, uh, prostate prostate megaly, sir. Uh, the median sulcus is obliterated in this also, and we cannot go beyond the upper border of the prostate. Okay. Gita sir, is this the normal grading which is accepted, or uh, because most of the standard textbooks never mention grading on DRE? Yes. Ah, uh, sir, sir, grading grading of the prostate is by uh, digital rectal examination by endoscopy. Ah, uh, 
and by sonography so these are three ways of uh, grading the prostate uh, whatever he has told uh, that can be accepted in the exam mm -hmm. so he he is not per, uh, very particular in uh, he has confused three and four mm -hmm. uh, again that how much what is the grade one means how much is the gram wo bhi diya hai sir pura to diary grading system uh, perfectly bola nahi to usko perfect diary grading system bolna padega है सर वो डिजिटल रेक्टल एग्जामिनेशन पे तैयारी ग्रेडिंग लिटरेचर के हिसाब से भी अवेलेबल है एंड ग्रेड 1 डज नॉट हैव एनीथिंग लाइक अ स्मूथ सरफेस है इट्स या सर सर सरफेस का उसका कोई ये नहीं है सर डिपेंड अपॉन द साइज ओनली सो आई विल प्लेस प्लेस इन द चैट बॉक्स वी विल गो अहेड सर Sir, grading can be done on the basis of Barney's classification, sir, of 1959. Uh, there are four grades: grade one, two, three, four. One, uh, uh, grade one is less than two centimeter. Grade two is two to three centimeter. Grade three is three to four centimeter, and grade four is more than four centimeter. And that is a projection of the prostate within the lateral lumen, sir. Correct. That is one classification. Agreed. That is one classification. There is second classification also. And it says that there is uh, this thing. What you say, endoscopic grading also, and ultrasound. Yeah, ultrasound. So there are lots of gradings, but commonly used. Uh, the other one which we use is absolutely small flat gland. You palpate the gland very easily. Small gland. That is one. Second is usually you reach the top of the gland with little effort. Grade three is you reach with lot of effort and manage to palpate the hole. In the first one again, the lateral sulcuses are easily palpable, and the last is uh, such a large prostate that you your finger cannot absolutely reach any the, at the top of the prostate. So that is one, two, three, four, which probably sir was telling you. This is normally we use. That is what we use at least when we are doing diary in the clinic. Yes. let's proceed first thing because then the next parvan examination so just uh, sharma sir had asked you that question no uh, yes, of diary so there is a lateral question to that is which is the best position for diary सब बेस्ट क्वेश्चन पर डियर सर सिम्स पोजीशन नॉट द सिम्स पोजीशन सर द क्वेश्चन अभी क्या मुझे लगा तो फटाफट आंसर दोगे अभी एग्जामिनर सर द पेशेंट मेनी फॉरवर्ड ऑन द ऑन द काउच एंड वी कैन पुट वी कैन डू अ डियर फ्रॉम द बिहाइंड सर लेफ्ट लैटरल पोजीशन और सिम्स पोजीशन नहीं नहीं ये फॉरवर्ड एंड बिहाइंड मेरे को नहीं समझा मतलब sorry i mean let us not waste time again probably in the elbow position is the best position for dr only thing is it is slightly uncomfortable to the patient so usually not done but there are many people who do it in this position yes sir okay sir let's go ahead please yes sir So, question uh, for our examination was then is one question with the right concern of uh, on inspection of lacus centri place all coordinates are moving equally with respiration no scar sinus or engorged veins were seen on palpation no localized temperature no tenderness was present bladder was not palpable on percussion in pain no present all over abdomen normal liver dullness was present uh, auscultation normal bowel sounds were present mm. uh, respiratory system sir bilateral air entry was equal uh, on cardiovascular examination as well as to is present no murmurs were there on uh, cns there was no abnormality detected so 78 year old male with the difficulty in passing urine what cns system you examined sir we will examine the uh... see aisa koi sawal pucha to obviously i want to tap tap sir your theoretical knowledge because i know what you have done So start telling. No, what is 
न्यूरोलॉजी एक्सामिनेशन तुला पीटी मेहता में जो पढ़ा था थोड़ा बता देना मेडिसिन में एटलीस्ट यूरोलॉजिकली व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट अचिन यू कैन आंसर मेरा यू कैन आंसर यूरोलॉजिकली क्या इंपॉर्टेंट यूरोलॉजिकली इंपॉर्टेंट यू कैन एग्जांपल बल्बो कैवर्नस रिफ्लेक्सर दैट uh tells about about the s2 s3 s4 but nl tone is normal yes pension sir okay so you check other reflexes with that then ye kaun sa level hai l se leke s tak to uske thode dermatomes dekh lo ye sab aisa kar sakte ho you say all these things yes okay go ahead so I don't quiet if you, i mean these are all things which probably we all have learned I don't think you should keep quiet. Yes. And not only, I mean, the bulb of awareness is, the rest of plantar reflex, etc. All of this should be seen. Yes. Seventy-eight year old will be difficult in passing. Any anything? My first thought would be rule out Parkinson's. Yes, absolutely. And that is very important in CNS examination. So, in general examination, gait, etc., is very important. Hmm. On urine routine, uh, there were WBCs 10 to 12 for high perfusion. There was no no RBC seen. There was no RBC sir in in the blood hmm. in the urine sir. Okay. So one okay. thing we didn't ask you actually was uh, what at, at end what was your actual clinical differential diagnosis? सर डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस कुड बी ब्लैडर आउटलेट ऑब्सट्रक्शन ड्यू टू मेलिग्नेंट और बेनाइन एलार्जमेंट ऑफ प्रोस्टेट और इट कुड बी यूरिनरी ब्लैडर कैलकुलाइज और डीआरई हार्ड था दैट वाज द ओनली पॉजिटिव फाइंडिंग इन द एंड इन द होल थिंग सो माय डीआरई हार्ड और किस चीज से हो सकता है इट कुड बी ड्यू टू ग्रैनुलोमैटस पोस्टेटाइटिस इट कुड बी ड्यू टू प्रोस्टेटिक इंफेक्शन इट कुड बी लिम्फोमा प्रोस्टेट इट कुड बी प्रोस्टेटिक कैल्सिफिकेशन Okay. So all these somewhere are the DDs. Okay, go on. Let's go to the investigation. We did a uh, we did a RFT, CBC, and urine R and a serum PSA. Serum PSA was twenty one point zero four. Twenty one point zero four. Okay. Uh, then we did a USG KUB. Uh, We showed both kidneys were normal in size, shape, outline, and equitexture. Bilateral corticomedullary differentiation was maintained. Bilateral ureter was normal in course and caliber. Urinary bladder was well distended with normal appearing wall. Prostate was 42 grams and pre-void was 280 cc. Post-void residual urine was 80 cc. Hmm. Chalo. Okay. Uh, it was also done. We showed the Q max of fifteen point four milliliter per second, and uh, time to Q max was twelve seconds, and uh, boiling time was total thirty four seconds. And average flow rate was seven point one milliliter per second. So, Miraj, from this, now what you want to know? There is uh, some amount of uh, uh, residue was there, which is nearly significant. It's slightly less than one third. And the uh, Q max is also decreased. Uh, Q max is decreased, uh, and the bell shaped curve is also there. Uh, so, but uh, there are no nodules or anything which are visible on the uh, ultrasound in the prostate <coughs> because uh, the PPSA is very high. I would first like to give a trial of antibiotics and then recheck the serum PSA and. Then follow it up with because if the PSA is still significantly high, I would like to rule out a malignancy by way of uh, free PSA, by way of uh, uh, the PSA density, and uh, also by way of any multi-parametric MRI 
for this patient. Which antibiotic you will give? We will give uh, fluoroquinolones because they have a good uh, a concentration in the prostate. Without culture? Uh, yes, sir. good culture, sir. Okay, uh, in the urine, the WBC are 10 to 12. Yes. What sir. are the normal range in male? Yes, sir. Normal range, now, how much is the normal range? WBC per how much PF in male? Beyond Zero, that, to Zero to one. Zero to one. So this patient having WBC 10 to 12. So in one line, uh, you just describe all the investigations up to a multi-parametric MRI. Better to go step by step, let uh, examiner also ask something. Right? So your patient had a PSA act of 21.04 with some pus cells and a hard prostate. Yeah, I just added to what Mahindra was saying. So hard prostate, if you are convinced by digital rectal examination, you will have to probably go finally for a biopsy. And in today's victim before biopsy, you will have to go for an MPMRI. I would treat this patient for some UTI, definitely. But if I find a clinically hard prostate at 78, patient is after counseling interested, then he would undergo this algorithm of tests. On PR, if there is any hard nodule palpable, <coughs> One has to go for MRI and followed by whatever the PSA may be. Even if the PSA is less, still we have to do MRI and uh, and if, if in if there is and or a firm prostate, then what you see is agreeable. Ganesh, I put it one uh, step ahead. If even if the PSA is normal, even if MRI is not showing, you know, uh, for probability of malignancy, but if you feel the hard prostate. I think you have to go ahead with the biopsy. Usually we go. Ahead. Again, again there is a discussion that the biopsy first or MRI first. So MRI, MP MRI should be first. Already in, we discussed in last class. Yeah. So MP MRI will be the choice of investigation ahead of the biopsy. Absolutely. Okay. So first thing, show them MRI. Oh, I'm going to go. Oh, I'm going to go. क्या हुआ स्वस्ति स्वस्ति का सम वाईफाई टाइम 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 बक्से सर जस्ट जस्ट तू विल Tell them the causes for uh, anterior MRI than the trust bypass. I will just share the MRI, sir. Because majority, majority, majority examiners, old examiners, <laughs> still uh, believes in doing the biopsy. You know, there is a uh, digital rectal examination shows a hard prostate and uh, uh, increased PSA because the yield of uh, having a malignancy in a positive diarrhea and raised prostate is near about 60 to 70 percent. But current literature uh, supports the anterior MPMRI prior to the biopsy and the reasons probably is the biopsy related hemorrhages made the interpretation of two to weighted images difficult. That is one, and we have to wait for at least a six weeks if you do a biopsy for resolution of the inflammation and edema. 
Uh, so these are the two common reasons put forward in literature for doing the MPMRI prior yeah. to that. The important reason nowadays is that more than a systematic biopsy, MRI will give you a cognitive idea yes, of yes. Uh, where is that the is important cause. Like Target yes. biopsy, targeted biopsy is most important. Yes. These are the three. Actually, we discussed all that last time. So yes, go ahead yes. MRI report, no problem. Should I go ahead with the report of the yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, read the report. <laughs> so the prostate measures 4.3 to 4.7 to 3.8 centimeters in anteroprostate transverse cephalocorded dimensions corresponding to 38 cc, mildly enlarged in size. There is evidence of an ill-defined infiltrating T2 hypointense lesion in the right peripheral zone extending into central gland in the transition zone as well as into the left peripheral zone in the transition zone with the dimensions of lesion. Measuring 4.1 centimeter into 3.7 to 2.4 centimeter into posterior transverse and cephalocorded dimensions. The lesion is seen extending from inferior to superior aspect of posterior dent. The lesion is extending from 5 o'clock position to 11 o'clock position. Capsular bulge with a suspicious area of capsular breach is noted from 6 o'clock position to 8 o'clock position, measuring around 2 centimeter in the cranial aspect of the gland. Cranially, the lesion is extending to involve the seminal vesicles on both the sides in both paramedian aspects. The capsule is well maintained in the inferior aspect of the gland. No mm -hmm. obvious involvement of neurovascular bundle is seen in the present scan. On post contrast scan, no direct evidence of any obvious early arterial enhancement washout is identified. Uh, also, sir, there is no evidence of pelvic adenopathy as per this MRI report. Okay. Yeah, so I think now next what? Uh, sir, MRI, this MRI hasn't mentioned any pirates category, but clearly the way they have elaborated, it's a malignancy only. But still, I would like to go with trust biopsy, sir. Okay. Okay. Next slide. So, Achim, when you ask an exam, no, you say, Ki, I would like to have a trust guided 12 core systematic biopsy plus whatever you are hearing for the last two classes, you should say, Ki, I would request at least for a MRI region targeted biopsy also. Yes. See, that is a complete answer. Trust biopsy. So I would like to have trust biopsy, whatever, whatever of prostate. Okay. Okay. Sir. Oh, can you can you tell us? Yes. Sir. Okay. Biopsy, tell sure. Biopsy report, sir. So I change your answer. How now? Next, what you are talking about trust biopsy? So tell us what you will tell in exam. Uh, sir, uh, trust guided prostate biopsy, sir. 12 core. Systemic 12 core biopsy. Ab, ab, abhi bola na yaar. Oh, sir, 12 core uh, trust guided prosthetic biopsy. MRI, MRI guided <laughs> lesion biopsy. Are yaar. Swastik. Sir, 12 core trust guided systematic biopsy for the prostate. And we can also go for uh, uh, MRI tar uh, targeted uh, biopsy for the MRI uh, lesion. Legion soon okay. okay, show us the biopsy report. Yes, sir. So in a patient with the PSA 21 nanogram per milliliter and T2 uh, <coughs> hypotense lesion in peripheral zone extending to uh, as per the MRI report. On uh, trust guided biopsy from the right lower prostate, 11 of the 13 cores show an adenocarcinoma prostate with lesion score 4 plus 3 with uh, equal to 7 and grade uh, group 3. And uh, the tumor was involved uh, has involved approximately 65 percent of volume in the involved cores. Perineural invasion was not seen. On the front, left side, three of the four cores were adenocarcinoma prostate. Lesion score five plus three eight. Grade group four. Tumor was involved 50 percent of the volume, and perineural invasion was not seen in this also. Grade group four, guys. Four plus three, then. So four plus three on the side, the right side, and five plus three on the. Okay, five plus three on the left side. Yeah, so I think this is a histopathic repair. So I think what is the meaning of 5 plus 3? 5 plus 3, sir, uh, Gleason's road, uh, 5 is the uh, uh, most common uh, Gleason pattern noted, and 3 is the uh, three is the most common Gleason pattern noted, and 5 is the most aggressive Gleason pattern noted. 
No, no, no. Is the highest. Most common and the highest. Most common and the highest grade. Yes. Sir. Most dominant. Should I go in next slide? Yeah, go ahead. Take it. They are under patient are also undergone the PSM PET scan. The image of the scan was uh, as shown in the. But you just wait. Let us ask the question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Miraj. Next, what? Now you have got a MRI report. You have got a biopsy report. Yes, sir. So it is uh, like a locally uh, advanced uh, prostate cancer P three B zero. According to the MRI, so I would like to further see uh, if there are any more uh, lymph nodes because uh, the presence of lymph nodes will modify the uh, the treatment plan and uh, extent of dissection. And so uh, I would like to uh, further look for the lymph nodes with PSMA scan. Uh, yes. And so if the PSMA scan is not available in yes, your sir. place. And also to look for the local and distant meds. Also, I would like to look for the PSMS scan. No, but if the PSMS scan is not available, now what you'll do? Yes, sir. Uh, if PSMA is not available, then any choline uh, uh, scan, if it is available, or if it is not available, bone scan uh, uh, can be done to look for the bone meds. And CT scan can uh, for uh, the for the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. Scan or PET scan? I am telling you, PET scan is not available. So now, what else is left? So you want to see the bones and you want to the, the to see the soft tissue, yes, correct? Sir. Yes. So, so you will like to do bone scan and you like to do CT scan. Yes, sir. So CT scan of what? Um, CT scan of. Uh, the abdomen and the pelvis. The whole yes, sir. So you don't want to see the chest? Ideally, I want to see the chest. A uh, whole body, like whole body MRI will be done. So similarly. <laughs> Ganesh, can you just... Uh... Explain so that. Normally, we do a PSMA PET scan. If you don't want to do a PSMA PET scan, what we used to previously do was we, we have an MRI pelvis here. What we call MP MRI prostate, they will usually cover the pelvis finally. Yes. So we do a CT, CT chest and abdomen and a bone scan. Okay. Fine. I think, I mean, uh, we always should also record the ALP value, alkaline phosphates. Just to add a certain statement, uh, if the PSMA is not available, then to write a sodium of 18, of course, it also is the most sensitive in the MDT bone scan. That can be done. Oh. Swastik, go ahead, show them. So this was the image of the PSM PET scan done for this patient. Uh, both the lateral lobes of the prostate showed <laughs> uh, uptake. And uh, there was a node also on the uh, mesorectum and uh, objective group of single positive on that part also. So, so. Your screen again, we are not able to see. It is not changing. Is it okay, anyway, so is it changing right now? No, it's not changing. Anyway, you have said the report. So, Achin, this is the report now. Sir, report, uh, I want to hear again. Sir, so, the PSM uh, expressing large enhancing ill-defined lesion is seen involving the right peripheral zone of the prostate, <coughs> extending into central gland and some part of left peripheral. Uh, 
near the base of prostate with involved in bilateral seminal vesicles mainly in paramedian region right more than left along with suspicious extra prostatic extension on the right side and lymph nodes <clears throat> sir no uh, no relevant left pelvic or abdominal lymph node noted another uh, a psma expressing small sub centimeter lymph node is seen in the right obturator region measuring 0.5 into 0.7 cm in maximum transverse dimension another tiny sub centimeter psma expressing right mesorectal lymph node seen measuring 0.6 into 0.5 cm in maximum transverse dimension no relevant left pelvic or abdominal lymphopathy seen so sir it shows uh, the lo uh, the psma pet scan report can be interpreted as locally advanced uh, Uh, prostatic carcinoma uh, with the uh, lymph node involvement present sir and uh, m0 is m. it is t3 c with n1 with m0 sir okay so now next what you want to do uh, sir now i will uh, counsel the patient sir regarding the further management i will disclose to the patient that he is suffering from prostatic malignancy and uh, this will require uh, further treatment considering his age as 78 and uh, presenting complaints that lurch with the uh, uh, stage uh, t3c uh, malignancy uh, there are two more uh, in oncology when you have uh, all the investigations in your hands the next step is always stratification Yes. So, so he want uh, he want to ask this stratification, and uh, in this this patient belongs to which risk? Very high risk. High risk. PSA is twenty uh, one, and the stage is T three C, and the uh, Gleason is uh, maximum Gleason is five plus three seven to eight. So if I if I ask, what is the difference? in the stratification criteria of uh, very low risk low risk or uh, intermediate and high risk what is the difference between the uh, you know, all these criteria as per sir yes as per dmco classification the risk stratification has been primarily based on three parameters <laughs> it is uh, oh, a that, that we know that we know yes i just want to highlight one thing in there is the very low risk all factors Must be present all factors, okay. And when we try to the high risk, really advanced or the intermediate, okay, and even this is sufficient to classify the level into the high risk. For intermediate, we should always go with the HC scan guidelines, which are quite uh, intermediate and stable and stable. Mahendra, your voice is not clear. Yes, sir. Sir, your voice is breaking. Yes. Are you clear? Not clear. Hello? It's breaking, Hello? sir. In between. Are you still? That is clear. Clear? Hello? No, no, not clear. Okay. So, uh, just go and read the AUA risk stratification and NCCN risk stratification. So, this is the uh, very low, low, uh, high, high risk, and very high risk. and intermediate there are five uh, class ways of classifying it depend upon the clinical stage psa the number of biopsy core positive then percentage of the biopsy core positive psa density uh, these are the factors they considered while uh, classifying these uh, patient into various uh, risk uh, uh, stratifications so you should be at least know okay, what is my very low risk and what is my very high risk in this patient. Very high. What is my very high risk? So tell me, what is my very high risk? The recurrence is more than fifty percent. And which which type of patient is certified as a high risk? Very high risk. <laughs> Sir, PSA more than twenty. Uh, uh, stage T three T three C to T four. तो कौन सा बता रहे हो आप ये बता रहे हो डीएमई को बता रहे हो एनसीसीएन बता रहे हो डीएमई को सर हाँ डीएमई को बता रहे हो तो बताओ हाँ प्रोस्टेट स्टेज 
and uh, uh, PSM more than twenty. Very high. Okay. okay. So, uh, the why why there is a need to stratify this such type of patients? Why there is a need <laughs> assess the risk assessment? Why what is the need preoperatively? What is the need to assess the assessment of risk? क्या जरूरी है करने का? और no knowing the risk of recurrence so that adjuvant treatments can be added to the patient and to decide the treatment. Okay, that is one. Another. So when you talk to the patient and patient relative, it will help in counseling of the patient. One. Another, it will help in selection of the therapy. Correct. And in more more advanced rate disease, the such type of patient can be placed for some investigational treatments. Active surveillance. Yeah. So such type of uh, such these are the benefits of assessing the risk. Ganesh sir, bold do or kuch? No sir, बराबर है. So for counselling, choosing treatments, uh, choosing workup modality also. So by yes. guidelines, low risk, we may not do a metastatic workup. So few things are like that. Yes sir. So in this, what treatment you are offering now, Miraj? What is your choice? So this is a locally advanced cancer. So in this, the ideal treatment will be a multi-modality treatment because uh, the lymph nodes are also positive. So it will be a systemic disease. So it needs local as well as systemic treatment. And uh, there is the study uh, by D and Lau et al. Uh, where if only uh, radi uh, radiation is given, then only 35% of uh, 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 cancer-free survival will be there over the next five to ten. If uh, with the ra radical prostatectomy is done, 65% will be there. However, if multi-modality treatment is there, then almost 80 to 90% survival could be there, and hence uh, multi-modality treatment I would prefer. So. as this patient is belongs to the very high risk category so first thing what what, what is his remaining life survival if it is a more than 5 or less than 5 if you expect it is a more than 5 then that is a different treatment. and if it is expect less than 5, then there is a different treatment. so suppose this is a more than 5 year survival so what treatment you offer to the patient this is a very Old patient, seventy-eight years, with a carnosity of eighty percent. Uh, but he is having that, a local advanced cancer. That 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 everything we have assessed, and this patient comes under the very high risk group. So, and if his life survival is also, suppose less than five and more than five. So, if it is more than five, what treatment? And if it is less than five, what treatment? <coughs> Already, Anjit has. Classified it is as very high risk. Oh. Miraj, you are understanding the question. Yes, sir. Okay. If it is the patient is having a survival uh, more than five years, we can give a more aggressive treatment uh, that is ADTs along with the, he can be given uh, IMRT uh, radiation uh, or uh, if he is fit enough for surgery, he can also be offered a. Uh, Uh, a, a complete uh, multimodality treatment with radical prostatectomy. If the survival is less than five years, then he may go for only ADTs uh, and um, yes, yeah, uh, only yes, sir. Uh, or he can go for uh, uh, watchful waiting. Uh, yes, sir. He can go for uh, ADTs, sir. He can, he's uh, symptomatic, so he can go for uh, ADTs, sir. And if uh, he is fit enough, he may also go for radiation. So, for if the life survival more than five year, I will explain the patient. But uh, these are the following options available in front of you. Option is ABRT plus and ADT. So you have to take ADT at least for one point five to three year. So this is the one option. Plus minus chemotherapy or cytosine if it is required. Another option is ABRT plus 
ब्रैकेट थेरेपी प्लस एडिटी थर्ड ऑप्शन रैडिकल प्रोस्टेटेक्टामी प्लस पीएलएनडी और पेलुक लिम्फ नोड डिसेक्शन सो आई विल डिस्कस प्रोज एंड कॉन्स ऑफ द ऑल थ्री ऑप्शंस एंड एज पर द पेशेंट कंसेंट वी विल गो अहेड विद द वन ऑफ द ट्रीटमेंट दिस इज द ट्रीटमेंट ऑप्शंस अवेलेबल फॉर high risk and very high risk patient having a more life survival more than 5 years yes. and for less than 5 year again three options one is observational treatment don't do anything another is only adt and third is only ebr so remember important things are age uh, yes. performance status <laughs> life expectancy we don't have any formula to calculate but normally in the clinics we ask life uh, expectancy in the family we ask the patient if you have any elder brother sister and parents were approximately when but most people who are 70 80 80 nowadays will not remember why or when their parents would have probably expired so these three are apart from the base risk stratification these three features are important to take a decision if you see the nccn guideline they make it easier you to say that decision with respect to the survival expected survival matlab life expectancy okay so Correct. so here locally advanced patient 78 year old directly first two radiation options will come in with hormone therapy the treatment would be if you see the guidelines european locally advanced prostate cancer surgery as a multimodality comes in a select group of patients now they have left to me how to select properly so how i would select is if it is a younger patient i would do that probably not at 70 maybe i would not do unless he tells me that at his house in 78 the life expectancy is beyond 100 okay and last option watchful waiting is always an option so he is because he is more he is 78 years and kanosvi is 80% <coughs> so the hmm. best treatment will be you according to you will be the hormonal therapy with a radiation therapy after treating lower intact symptom correct ha huh. so we can do a trp also yeah or can we start uh, alpha blocker and uh, can give one dose of uh, lhrh antagonist or can you give a ips score was 22 i think out of 35 so i guess hmm. upper limit it is of more of yeah so it is more of adenoma mm -hmm. okay so in case so, we are going to opt for radiation in a 78 year old then it is best to start him on hormone therapy do a trp let the wound heal for two months and then think about his fitness again and radiation okay fine so uh, miraj another student uh, <coughs> you understood okay yes sir okay uh, all these are different option so any question on this otherwise we'll go ahead with the second case uh, sir one question mm no watchful waiting in this case no sir ha uh, no watchful waiting don't say because okay so one one question from my side what factors <laughs> based on what factors will you decide <laughs> this patient should undergo or which type of therapy will be the useful for him either surgery or the radiation uh, depending on the chief complaints uh, with which he uh, presented sir in this yeah. case he presented with the low unit red symptoms so uh, a surgical treatment would suit him better because yeah. uh, uh, radiation might actually worsen his storage symptoms and uh, yeah, at the age of 78 he will 22 maybe giving alpha blocker may relief become 70 60 score maybe 40 it can it may reach that we do not know yes. 
So how will you? How will you? Yes, I want to guide you. How will you choose? Uh, the patient will ask. So, both are. So doctor, mm -hmm. tell me which therapy is good for me. How will you going to counsel the patient? Because uh, management of oncology never all, all depends on the counseling. मेरे तो मॉडफुल वेटिंग पे पूछ रहे हैं। नो नो डिफरेंट थेरेपी विच फैक्टर्स दे विल सी टू दे ऑफर द थेरेपी रेडिएशन और सर्जरी। सर फर्स्टली हिस चीफ कंप्लेंट शुड बी रिजोल्व। सो द चीफ कंप्लेंट्स आर बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ द आउटलेट ऑब्सेक्शन। सो एस पर दैट सर्जरी इज़ अ बेटर ऑप्शन। एंड इफ़ इस लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी that uh, if in case of the longer life expectancy we would should proceed with uh, uh, surgical treatment followed by adjuvant radiotherapy because there are high chances the margins in this case could be positive and even if the margins are not positive we should give radiotherapy why why am i asking this question just all of you to read few trials okay. and burden. the the protector this patient has no nodes it is not locally advanced Okay, recently, recently, protect trial was published with the 15 years of data. Okay, and that was something practice changing trial. Okay, yes. So that that you should read by which which factors, what factors you will decide which portion should go for radiation, and what is the effect of a survival, recurrence, the survival, biochemical recurrence in all the modality. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tell you about the next case, sir. Baraka, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Quick comment on this thing. Watchful waiting. Watchful waiting technically is a palliative treatment. It can be applied to all stages. But important thing is the patient to those whom they are applied. It's applied. The survive. The life expectancy is less than ten years. I said you don't say it in exam. Your examiner may not, you know, like it, but in case somebody asks you the question, these are the words. It is a palliative patient specific treatment. I mean, there is patient specific, no treatment, no specific things. There is no endpoint or anything, anything. There is no follow up protocol, nothing. It's a palliative treatment. Palliative means only patient comes when he is symptomatic. And it can be applied to all stages of prostate cancer. Okay. Okay. And EU okay. guidelines, there is a uh, very uh, a table. Difference uh, <laughs> between the prevalence and the watchful rating. Yeah. Yeah. So next. Next case. Yes, sir. Like it's moving or I think my pass is moving or what? Do you know? No, no, no. It's not moving. तो थोड़ा लॉग आउट करके वापस दे दो ना यार फिर ईमेल कंपनी है तो सो इट विल बी अ तो टिल दैट टाइम एग्जामिनर में आज लाइक व्हाट द रोल ऑफ न्यू अर्जुन थेरेपी टू द सर्जरी एंड व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ न्यू अर्जुन हार्मोनल थेरेपी प्रायर टू द रेडियो थेरेपी तो दिस आर द Two questions like uh, can you give some uh, uh, in injection dagger legs one or two it will help so uh, new argument uh, ADT before the radical prostatectomy doesn't improve the cancer specific survival as well as overall survival one statement please make in make a clear in your mind so I says there is no role of new argument at androgen deprivation prior to the radical prostatectomy. One. Another. New adjuvant androgen therapy prior to the radical uh, radiation therapy. Theoretically, yes. It will ability, there, there is ability to reduce the target volume and it will potentiate the cytotactic uh, synergy of the radiotherapy <coughs> along with the uh, androgen therapy. And the concurrent therapy which is given along with the radiotherapy is more important than the androgen therapy given prior to the radiotherapy. So these are the two uh, situations where the new adjuvant therapy 
questions can be asked that is prior to surgery and prior to radiotherapy so just a very small thing prior to surgery if still an examiner asks you you clearly say that the data matlab you add on and say data is still evolving because okay. there are some studies going on. and with respect to radiation there is a stamped mr which says that today if you are going to give adt and radiation you addition of abiratron for 2 years has fantastic results okay sir to neuroid given sir one doubt yeah tell me what is the doubt uh, sir neuroid given hormone therapy doesn't affect the specific survival and overall survival but it delays the clinical progression so if we are going for a radical prostatectomy surgery for mm. after 3 months or so or maybe 4 months so can we give hormone uh, lupride injection regardless so it is not into the guidelines that is one thing secondly it is uh, it was used in during covid to postpone uh, surgeries and we have done surgery on all such patients it should not be used as a routine mechanism to give uh, drugs uh, many of the clinicians use this you know injection le lo and mere paas do mahine baad aa jao as a method of booking the patient very clearly you all are students so remember these things wherever you work many people do that for booking the patient which is technically not good new adjunct before surgery is not a guideline yet there is data coming up with it with respect to various things earlier there were trials 15 years back new adjuvant before surgery it did not have any improvement in overall survival but pathology margins uh, were improved and operability was slightly improved but that time we used only adt then 3 uh, 4 years back there was data with i think adt plus abiratron and then radical prostatectomies so that gave again very good results uh, in the short term long term results were not available okay oh, okay some people they say that if you use uh, uh, the same hormonal therapy then it causes more of the fibrosis and the dissection may become difficult so i have seen that sometimes but i think it is more with gnrh agonist i feel because in covid whenever gnrh agonist was given or antagonist was given i think antagonist was probably still better now now there is another question that I didn't after the difficulty operating after giving gnrh analog also but okay evidence does not support to give in all patients now another question say after biopsy now what is the latest how many days you should wait So we should wait four to five weeks. It is straightforward. There is nothing wrong with it. Basically, that is the time for an interface to whatever hemorrhages. Whatever is a different thing, but it again heals up that plane which is posterior to the prostate. If you do a are... biopsy, it heals the plane which is anterior to the or anterior means at the apex of the prostate. Okay, because there are some paper which says that <coughs> the chances of fibrosis increases after uh, three to four weeks. So in fact, they are saying that you can operate after fourteen to fifteen days. I don't know, sir. World over, they do it at four to five weeks. I have not read this actually. I'll find out. Okay. But world so over, it, they have the standard thing that you operate after four to five weeks of biopsies. people okay. are sure that patients will go away probably of it so that is the answer in the exam at present yeah okay senior your two go ahead a short history <laughs> one more thing which i feel sir many people have seen they give uh, gnrh uh, agonist injection and oh. then then you know i have seen this in mumbai also call the patient to operate after one month so i don't know what logic it does because gnrh agonist otherwise also the action starts on the day 21 24 sometime till then right. there is flare hmm so if you are pushing in a flare reaction and operating at one month 
it is madness sk to Correct. every demons so it is not recommended sk i don't know who you are but it is not no 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 i sk is unfair that someone has asked that after trp how much you should wait okay for what radical prostatectomy yeah yeah okay i would say this in my own experience that after trp it is better to wait and do an mri first if that trp is bulb and there is only a capsule remaining this surgery is going to be very 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 difficult people try these surgeries then do piecemeal removal of the prostate some part is left behind seminal vesicle there is that there is lot of fibrosis in such patients so after trp is if there is a good prostate left these are the better patients to operate this is what i feel in my long uh, personal experience yeah but otherwise i think 3 months is good enough yeah 3 months is good enough okay fine so yeah the second case first take you can read yes sir <laughs> a 85 year male presented with complaints of dysuria and frequency for 2 months history of hesitancy interrupted for incomplete maturation was there there was no history of urgency there was no history of hematuria fever or vomiting in that case okay the next so patient is a known case of diabetes mellitus and hypertension on medication there is no history of any surgery in the past on examination patient was conscious cooperative well oriented to time place and person moderately built and nourished uh, pulse was 80 per minutes 80 beats per minutes bp was 140 by 90 mm of mercury respiratory is 20 and uh, bmi is 23 the kanovsky score was 17 in this patient there was no evidence of either it was sinus clubbing or lymphopathy or edema head to do examination spine examination was normal uh, sir cardiovascular chest and peripheral yeah. condition is normal pr yeah. yes sir on factor examination uh, there was no feature of historic bloods and it was normal prostate megaly was there great pain there was uh, it was hard inconsistency there is no it was non tender upper border was reached and medial surface palpable Little mucosa was mobile and it was empty. No blood on the gloves. Okay, Achin. So now next, what you want? Uh, sir, <laughs> IPSA score. I have to grade the symptoms, and uh, then uh, uh, your uh, urine routine examination and uh, uh, blood investigation, CBC, renal profile, serum, PSA, and uh, sir, uh, uh, urophilometry and ultrasonography. A U S G K O B sir. yeah just show all the investigation sir urine rm was done uh, the specified is there were uh, 0.6 red blood cells per high power field there was uh, no pus cells on examination there were epithelial cells 0.2 per high power field uh, bacteria was 18 per high power field this was a uh, positive finding in this urine rm sir so other investigation The UG KUB was done, sir. Uh, sorry for the mistake, sir. Uh, yeah, very last first question over here, sir. Uh, patient is eighty-two year old, right? Eighty-four years. Eighty-four years. So yes, why, sir, for the PSA was done? Because it was a hard prostate. <laughs> In the hard heart prostate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. I Sir, think in all these patients post eighty, and this patient particularly eighty four years old, as Mahendra said, even with a heart prostate, while doing a PSA, you should discuss with him first. Yeah. With the meaning of PSA, and what is going to happen with obviously that PSA is going to rise. I mean, come elevated. So, so these uh, our textbooks allow you to do that, but after a fair discussion of the patient. Because all these publications mention that after that discussion, what sequelae might happen? Some people at this stage might back out. So, uh, exam in exam, examiner may ask uh, this thing: uh, the task for EPSP task for guidelines. If you do anything uh, in serum PSA age group, so can you tell me what is the grade C and grade D recommendation? Pardon, sir. 
anybody knows upscf uh, task force uh, great c and great d recommendation about the psc screening it is between the 55 and 70 years of age 69 years old yeah it should be <coughs> to 70 years shared old. decision it should be shared decision and great indication against it right but again in this patient 84 year of age even dre is, is a normal heart toasted again it should be a shared decision the the reason of doing any investigation is only when it is going to affect the management right yeah so the, your your justification for this answer is your psa was done like that we discussed with the patient and he was okay with the because once the psa is high then you you can't ignore it okay so if the patient is symptomatic mahendra if the yes, patient sir. is symptomatic mm -hmm. then uh, for example this patient he has come with a uh, lower renal tract problem and in that that case if we don't do psa Then the shared decision. Right? That we have to ask the patient. You are 84 year old. Your real is normal. If we do serum PSA, there is chances of cancer, right? And if he says, "You know, no, I am okay. I, I can go with any treatment with the cancer." And even 84, we don't life expectancy. Maybe 86 is the, uh, the family family life uh, history. 86, 87. So what is going to different? Anyway, going for the watch watchful waiting or the TRP vaccine. So this should be the. It is shared decision with the patient. If he if he had in the seventy four sixty four year of age, there is there is no question like this. If the R is hard, why are you doing serum PSA? Nobody will ask you. Is it the condition you have to do a serum PSA? But eighty four, eighty eight, I think this is the zone where we should uh, uh, go with the shared decision or the serum PSA. No, but now if you find out that there are chances that it is a malignancy and it has caused the complication in patient. And if you don't do PSA, then right. what? Sir, so what will happen? Sir, any of the other things you are taking this patient. Shared decision making. So after yeah. that, technically, chalo, if you do a PSA, if you offer a treatment to this patient, depending on his expected life expectancy. Suppose if his life expectancy is five years from now, or eight years from now, your cancer-related treatment will not affect his life. Probably. Right now, for example, in this patient, this patient has got a uh, right kidney is mild hydronephrosis. They are saying it is a hydronephrosis. Now <coughs> there are now it is a malignancy, and malignancy has caused uh, obstruction of the lower ureter. But if you don't investigate him, you don't do PSA, you don't do biopsy, and you are not proving, then how you are going to treat it? No, 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 sir, sir, sir. We are saying shared decision. We are not saying we are not doing. Correct, sir. The story is Mahendra. Correct, sir. The story is before seventy year, if life survival is more than ten year, the two P in the country. After seventy year, there is a shared decision. No one is denying it. No, no, no. Don't do or don't do the P S A at eighty four. If that patient is asking for P S A, we have to do it. Yes, sir. But provided so this is yes, sir. Provided between the All the consequences of all, all, all this thing, the fact. Yes. Yeah. The prostate is indolent. Is majority of the cases that that the treatment even may not change the end result of that particular. Okay. So whatever, sir, whether you. Sir, what or... I yes, sir. About your question, about your question, if you see there is a unilateral hydronephrosis. Okay. So definitely we have to tell the patient your period your DR is hard. The cancer is a prostatic cancer. Maybe it is involving the ureteric orifice, and you need a biopsy to diagnose the cancer. And for the serum PSA, we have to. Do. If he says yes, then only we should go ahead with that. Normally, patient patient do the same day what we say, but patient should know everything why we are doing it. At least serum PSA at this age. Okay, understood. Sir, so if I can Fine. just add here, the the reason for this is that we do not want to do unnecessary biopsies. You see, at 86, nearly uh, say 60 percent of 86 year old men will have harbor prostate cancer, which probably is not clinically significant. 90 percent. 
90 percent. Yes, at 90 years it is 90 percent. Yes, 86 is ninth decade. 90 percent. Absolutely. So uh, we do not want to really diagnose these cancers because the moment you do PSA, you are pushing the patient for a next MRI and then biopsy and then a PSA with PET CT scan. Yes, so we yes. should know the cascade of events before he gets a PSA. Yes, if you have an 84 year old man who is absolutely fit and you expect him to survive for 10 years, then you can probably tell him that, okay, your life expectancy is good and it is probably justified doing a PSA. But most 84 men, 84 year old men, the PSA will not change the treatment plan. So if it's, I mean, this is hydronephrosis, but if it's plain simple symptomatic for BOO, then you can go for a TUR. You can treat the bladder outlet obstruction on merit. Okay, okay. Yes. Fine. So, if you are, uh, uh, you are not suspecting, what I understood is, if the clinically, if you are not suspecting malignancy, then in this age, it is not advisable to do PSA. And in case, if you are planning, then if the patient is telling you, then you go ahead with the PSA. And in case, if you are suspecting malignancy, then we discuss with the patient and then we say, okay, okay, we'll do PSA and if required, we'll do biopsy and prove the diagnosis and we'll treat you accordingly. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay. So, so, so one thing for the students, there are a there are few scores. Mm -hmm. What's your prediction of morbidity and the, uh, and the life expectancy is the G8 score and the Charleston index. Here are two scores which can predict uh, the life expectancy and the comorbidity score. So we can decide uh, about the management of prostatic cancer. Okay. Fine. So one is Charleston. First one is G8. G8. The data index is there. It's called G8. Oh. So there are eight G8. G8. Yes. Okay. Okay. Go I, I, I think I, I like that idea of uh, Ganesh Bhakti. That on an average in the family, how many years most of the people have survived, you know, that gives you a rough idea. Provided uh, this patient doesn't have much co comorbidity. Fine, go ahead. So, the usual bilateral renal cortical cysts were seen, right kidney having mild hydronephrosis, prostate megaly was there 27 cc, p void was 221 cc, and post void decibel unit was 79 cc in this patient on USC. Uh, so in this case, we did a PSA which was 60.4, and free PSA was 11.8 nanogram per milliliter. Okay, Meda, have you done a free PSA? Yes, sir. If the free PSA is less than 25 percent, it is more likely to be malignant. So here it is less than 25 percent, so this points towards malignancy. Uh, no, but so, what uh, I think is. Free PSA is important only when the Listen. PSA is in the gray zone area. Exactly. At 60 PSA, free PSA has no value. True, sir. Uh, maybe, uh, Parkasar, maybe in some lab, there is a pattern. If we do only serum PSA, automatically they do free, free, free no, that's PSA. Fair, PSA. That's fair, Mahindra. Yeah. But, when they but ask, in exam, they should not say. For only PSA. Hey, but Mahindra, yes, not really. He's saying she should understand. In, in the exam, you should not tell free PSA and percentile PSA for total PSA. <laughs> and especially oh, when uh, clinically you are palpating a hard prostate, then there is absolutely no place for free PSA. There is another question that Pankaj, Pankaj sir uh, highlighted, okay? The role of free PSA in the prostatic cancer. The ratio, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Pankaj, anything you, you wanted to add? No, 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 that's fair. Absolutely fair. So, I, Amiraj, I want to tell you only one thing that theory is one side and the individual patient is another, like in this patient. So, yes, what you are saying is the ratio is very important. But in this case, when the prostate is hard, when the PSA is so high, yeah, this ratio has got no value. You understand? So yes. you have to apply your knowledge depending on the particular case. 
You see, we want to look at free PSA to decide which patient we want to investigate further for cancer. In a patient where the prostate is already hard, your decision of further investigations is made in most situations. So whether whatever may be the free PSA does not make a difference. Fine. Okay. So now next, what we want to do, Mirai? Mira, quick. Yes, a free PSA is high, uh, and there is a uh, eighteen uh, WBCs are nil uh, over here. Uh, but uh, this uh, this is more pointing towards malignancy. Uh, I would still go for a culture of the urine, and uh, especially if the culture is negative, then uh, I would uh, like uh, then I would do a biopsy for this patient. Sir. Uh, I will uh, first do a multi-parametric, uh, uh, and then uh, 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 an ultrasound. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. A uh, multi-parametric MRI, and then I will plan for a uh, biopsy. Okay, so I think just to show them what we did. Yes, sir. Uh, so we did a, a biopsy. Which is uh, yes. Sir. In the right next slide, yeah. So, Mira, you have a biopsy report. This now, what is next? Like to do, and why? Uh, left lobe, uh, uh, there is a Gleason of nine, and the right it is Gleason of four. So, uh, this is um, kind of uh, proper malignancy is there, sir. So. Uh, further investigation to look for metastatic status. I want to uh, I want and uh, with a full body MRI. Yeah, you were saying MRI first, then biopsy. The biopsy is done. Why not you want to do an MRI then PSMA PET scan? Why are you choosing PSMA now? It was probably only a pelvic MRI which was done at that time, and um, yes. May reveal all the lymph nodes if they are positive, and uh, a PSMA scan. If I would like to do a PSMA scan to look for any bone mets for this patient, and uh, um, so and the, and then uh, I would uh, I would dis uh, look for the because the Nofsky uh, status is seventy, so probably he may not, uh, and the age is also very high of eighty five. Then he may not uh, generally uh, be fit for a multimodality treatment. So he might have to uh, undergo because he is symptomatic. He will be given, or uh, he may be counselled that he may require uh, uh, a, a radiation with an ADP. Okay. So Miraj, this patient has got a hard prostate. He is 84 years. He has got the right side of hydronephrosis, and uh, PSA is 50. Now. Yes. You want to do only one test or you want to do multiple tests? Multiple tests, because... How you are going to become wise? What is the importance of MRI and what is the importance of PSMA PET test? Uh, so when you will do MRI? Um, MRI, uh, pelvic MRI, I would do uh, pelvic MRI is already there, sir. So to look for any lymph node metastasis. No, we did not have MRI. No, we I have... Yes, and the biopsy. We did not uh, <laughs> have MRI. So the, the simple question is, if you uh, uh, when you'll do MRI and when you'll do PSMA PET. The uh, when the it depends upon. Um, like if the PSA is very high, it is already more than one point five. Then. Um, um, like uh, it may show almost 95 percent of the lesions. Um, yeah. but, yes, sir. Mahendra, five percent. Clear, clear, so clear. Atta gaya ho. Acha. So, so listen, listen. So there's a, and it is all about the approach. So suppose that no, this patient having. Uh, you, you, yes. you, you finish first, and I will clear the doubt. You finish first, yeah. Lymph, what were you saying? Lymph node only 50% might be identified uh, with this. To, for lymph 
identification for the ESMB might be done for this patient. Okay, so uh, let me put in another way. Suppose that this patient having five plus four nine, right? Serum PSA, serum PSA is sixteen. 16. So he is in, he is you can say it is a, a very high risk category. Am I right? A high risk category. Yes. And serum PSA sixteen four plus nine. Uh, how much chances to have developing blood disease or metastatic disease, metastatic, which is high? Yes. PSA of six. PSA sixty. Reason five plus four. With five being the most common. He is the high risk category, sir. He is likely to have a locally advanced and metastatic. Uh, likely, uh, likely to have locally advanced disease. Almost uh, um, thirty, thirty more than thirty percent, sir. Thirty percent. So suppose that if you do PSA with PET scan. Okay, first, and he anyway. Suppose that if you do MRI and there is no localized, no disease, uh, like locally advanced disease, anyway, you are doing to do a PSA PET scan. Um, by the guidelines, by the guidelines, any decent grade more than uh, four, if four is at a, a grade at the grade two is present, he can have to do a PSA PET scan. But right? so this case, this patient, hundred percent going to have PSA PET scan. And in case of PET scan, if the patient has single max, did you do MRI? Yes, sir. Why? Right? He having single max or two max in the bone. Did you do MRI for local staging? Um, um MRI is for. Uh... <clears throat> okay, so MRI is done only for local staging. Or yes. to differentiate between the with the pirate one, pirate two, pirate pirate five, to four five. Okay, yes. MRI has the metastatic staging, right? So first of all, you should know the indications of PSMA PET scan when it will be done. In this case, we can avoid one investigation. Okay, there is a no harm if we do PSMA PET scan first, prove it. But the disease is stage four or stage one, two, three. If PSMA scan is negative. Then doing MRI to find out the local staging is justified. Okay, if we do MRI and in MRI we we found suppose that uh, 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 pelvic nodes and one single pelvic bone mats. Anyway, we have to do a PSA PET scan. Or anyway, by this biopsy report we have to do PSA PET scan. So the investigation by default you have to do. You should do first to. Rule out the metastasis, then go for local staging. So on the right. flip side, uh, what is important is uh, here there is a very hard gland on DRE, and the PSA is sixty. So as Dr. Mandre is saying, there is a very high chance of finding metastatic disease, and that is why here particularly we don't need a MP MRI before biopsy so as to. Target the index lesion so as to get the best possible lesion or the highest possible lesion score from the index lesion, and that is why here with the high index of suspicion of metastasis, you go for a PSMA PET scan. So you can justify like that. You can say in case it comes negative, I would follow it up sometime adequately timed for a local staging MRI. Which also we can actually in real world practice differ a little bit. If I'm going to, if this comes non metastatic on PSMA PET CT, then the patient would be counseled for either radiation therapy, intermittent androgen blockade, or watchful waiting. So you may require a MRI only in the first case, that too, after two months receiving hormone therapy. Directly planning for radiation, if at all. Hmm. Okay. I hope what I said everybody heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I saw. Yeah, yeah. Miraj, Achin, you have understood, na? Uh, so this is for uh, uh, prostatic CA workup. Uh, the patient also has right mild hydronephrosis. 
So my so, life process with the postcode residue of whatever seventy nine eighty. We'll see. So for that CT scan so it can be debated by urologist that it is physiological also. Oh, okay. See, actually, because it is a very hard prostate and the PSA is very high, okay, the chances is a very high risk patient in a statutified, and that is the reason we are going to do PSMA PET scan first. Because there are ninety percent chances that we will find out that it is this metastatic disease, and you will not require any other investigation. Yeah, in so sure, next by yeah, yeah. So we did a PSMA PET, sir. The images yeah. are fine. Yes, Tell us. Yes, sir. The report, yes, sir. The report is uh, the prostate gland measured three point six into four point nine into four point one centimeter. With evidence of diffuse low-grade heterogeneous PSMA uptake seen in most of the prostate gland, there is no involvement of bilateral seminal vesicle or uh, anteriorly fat planes between the prostate gland and the base of the urinary bladder appears indistinct. Posteriorly, the fat planes between the base of the urinary bladder, sorry, between the lesion and the anterior wall of the anal rectum appears to be maintained. Okay. Yes. So Achin, you give me some reasons why not to operate this patient, and uh, Viraj, you give some reasons why not to give radiation therapy to this patient. Uh, sir, uh, patient uh, is a old age patient, Karnowski, seventy, age eighty four years old, with uh, locally advanced and diffuse pelvic lymphadenopathy, and uh, so it is a poor surgical candidate, sir. Pulmonary lymphadenopathy, is there? Uh, pelvic lymph diffuse pelvic lymphadenopathy. Pelvic. Okay. And also the right hydronephrosis, na? Yes, it's due to the uh, large uh, pelvic lymph, obturator lymph node. Yes. Nodal mass is encasing the ureter. Yes, yes. Okay. So, Mehraj, what is your thing, thought? Radiation does not uh, modify the uh, overall survival of this patient. And... Um, and radiation. Why did you say that? Today, the standard, standard treatment for locally advanced in such scenario is hormone therapy, ADT plus abiratron, possibly, and then radiation. So, how come radiation will not improve survival? It's not very easy question. Uh, yes, sir. Radiation uh, will in increase the uh, progression free survival. So if you have to speak against radiation, I will just say this is a old patient, it may not tolerate the full curative dose of radiation. I'll have to, anyways, give a suboptimal dose. That also might cause side effects with decreases, maybe health related and otherwise uh, quality of life. Yes, I will answer that matter. The question which I ask is rectal and bladder toxicity. <laughs> you are right. So, uh, in radiation terms, they call it GI and GU toxicity. Okay, oh. when you ask the final question. Okay. So, uh, you want to give radiation therapy to this patient or no therapy? Um, one surgery uh, uh, I think Achit has a whole lot of surgery now uh, and about radiation management in the radiation the ADT right or watchful waiting so which one you <laughs> so it is better to start telling Miraj that I will counsel the patient about what he has and what is the prognosis or the natural history of this disease Good. So, whenever you find a, a case of locally advanced disease in exam, please keep in mind, if that on the MRI, the patient is low, patient is having a low volume disease, and if it is possible to remove completely, then only RP with extended pelvic lymph node dissection. 
पहले एडवांस डिसीजन रिवॉल्व अराउंड द एच टी एन आर टी दिस इज बॉटम लाइन एच टी प्लस आर टी और आर टी प्लस सो अलोन एंटी अलोन एडीटी इज नॉट गुड कंपेयर टू द एडीटी प्लस आर टी और अलोन आर टी इज नॉट गुड compared to the rt plus edt so it is a rt plus edt that is hormonal treatment plus radiotherapy this is the one treatment another treatment that that treatment it's very useful when there when there is a biochemical failure and in case of the local localized disease it is definitely uh, radical prostatectomy with adjuvant treatment again when it is a uh, locally advanced disease so three options only keep in mind uh, hormonal therapy and radiotherapy uh, radical prostatectomy when it is localized disease locally advanced radical prostatectomy plus adjuvant treatment and a deferred treatment so if the patient is not willing for any anything or patient is not suitable for any type of treatment so there is uh, three four things keep in mind and protocol also investigation digital rectal examination psa mpmr biopsy scan and decision risk certification and the decision of the treatment kitna bhi examiner idhar udhar ghumane ka koshish kiya to ye dimag mein fix karke rakhna hai ki mujhe ye ye track se chalna hai fine so ganesh in this case what we did was we did uh, basically uh, hormonal therapy that is we did orthorectomy and we started abiraterone then we waited for the hydronephrosis to decrease but it did not decrease we continued the treatment and we had done the digest sanding because patient had a pain in the right lumbar region okay and then we repeated ultrasonography patient improved and now there is no hydronephrosis we have removed the digestion So this is the treatment. No, so this is the treatment. So Ganesh, you want to add anything? Ideally, after your treatment, after three months, I think this patient needs a PSMA PET CT scan. We need to see that lymph node encasing the ureter has it really gone down or not? Because you have just removed the DG. If it has not gone out, then he will again have adrenal process and pain. No, now DG removed almost uh, six months back. so i think still those lymph nodes should be monitored okay so so i should do now patient is again admitted so you tomorrow he is going for a uh, pet scan mm, he needs a pet scan sir and in such patient apart from treating them symptomatically the other options will always be there like intermittent androgen deprivation where you don't you, you are kind of giving him strong androgen deprivation today hmm ADT plus apiraterone, so that is the other thing. And I, in such patients who are moribund or whatever, the students you don't forget the ablative therapies, although they are not much in use. But, you can just tell them. Yeah, so cryo so, something is there more one more high fu. High fu. Yeah. Right. Some things you should know about these therapies. Now this patient may not be your best patient because he has. Full gland, full of disease. But if somebody had a focal or something, then that uh, high fu or cryo might be still okay in expert hands, not in everybody's hands. So, I think that for each malignancy uh, class, we will try to give them some like uh, outline of the topic or algorithm for management. Now, then, they will be confused, sir. Completely. सर वो तो यूरोपियन एसोसिएशन यूरोलॉजी गाइडलाइंस के बॉक्स में चार लाइन में लिखा है लोकली एडवांस्ड या हियर तो जस्ट व्हाट इज व्हाट यू टू इन्वेस्टिगेट इज वेरी क्लियर एंड हाउ टू ट्रीट इन लोकली एडवांस्ड पेशेंट्स इज वेरी क्लियर मतलब यू एट द एंड व्हाट आई फील यू और महेंद्र सर विल यू जस्ट सिलेक्ट द पेशेंट्स प्रॉपर्ली and then basically conventionally the treatment is hormone therapy and radiation in select patients who might be as i said younger 
or grossly obstructed but and not so older in those patients maybe surgery can still be done obviously multimodality obviously counseling the patients that multimodality is required and multimodality importantly what is multimodality counseling it is about two three things it is about using more therapies it is cost of these therapies and addition of side effects of these therapies so this is very important we just say i will counsel about multimodality means what it is this is the meaning of multimodality counseling okay and again uh, ideally this patient should be seen in a multidisciplinary team so these three four things you remember treatment is mostly lying on hormone plus radiation select cases surgery there is a non conventional option of intermittent androgen blockade in some patients who are very old maybe or then there is always an option of watchful waiting which is as i said a palliative option all stages no specific end point treated symptomatically and ablative therapies you should know for old moribund patient always now cryo or hypo global uh, global means the whole gland whole gland cryo or hypo has been quite proved disastrous in literature and with lot of side effects and complications <clears throat> so whole gland nobody treats nowadays it's about something like focal or hemi gland that's it. and follow up of this patients obviously is life long in hormone uh, in radiation today adt uh, new adjuvant adt plus adjuvant adt there is clear cut data from stampid which tells you to use abiratron along whenever you use abiratron obviously you have to prior uh, investigate the patient for a few things a work up a general work up is necessary abiratron is not a drug which is just given and again whenever is a patient is on abiratron monthly electrolytes and lfts have to be checked so remember all these things most of the people don't do that i think this is the most important point you have given <clears throat> the uh, two important things they have to say in exam what you said is that what is the meaning of the multi modality and multi speciality counseling these are the two most important things you know this also i also have learned today so any question from students Right. So, in the, chat box, is there any question which we have not answered? No, sir. I guess all question has been answered. Okay. Just, just, just read about multi-parametric sonography. Yes. Okay. Fine. When you are in the camera, it is not possible for some reason. At that time, multi-parametric sonography can be done. Uh, with bubble doppler and uh, the normal doppler hmm. and uh, the, uh, red uh, i mean computer superimposition okay so just just read something about because uh, examiner may ask that's just yeah. i'm telling okay. okay there is only one question that urp is to be done when so if you are planning for radiation therapy then first you should do trp and then do radiation number one second thing is if you have already given a hormonal therapy and the patient is not responding then only then you can do a channel trp correct ganesh yes sir yeah okay so next time okay. we are taking metastatic uh, ca prostate right sir fine is it is it okay next uh, begin uh, in whole medical oncologist then sir mute yeah. yes 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 i think that will end uh, if you can add uh, even the radiologist palak or someone else from your tata uh, to give some uh, idea about the mri yeah aparna ko puch sakte ha to let her start with uh, mri and then during the discussion you can ask the 
uh, onco physician to join us mm, sir thoda atam mein wo rahega aap pe hai guest happy aap mere other hospitals mein can you try please i will try if they i will confirm in 2 3 days but if they are suppose that they are busy मैं पूछ सकता हूँ विजय पाटिल को बट वो अच्छा सा हंसा लेक्चर देगा सब स्टूडेंट बोर हो जाएंगे सो लेट अस नो इन कपल ऑफ डेज बट एटलीस्ट वी आर गोइंग अहेड विद ऑंको फिजिशियन यू कैन जस्ट अरेंज बहुत बहुत बार सर मेटास्टेटिक प्रोस्टेट एग्जाम में यूजुअली शॉर्ट केस के हिसाब से रखते हैं और वो केस डिस्कस थोड़ा सा ठीक ठाक करना पड़ेगा लाइंड अप ओके ओके गुड नाइट सर गुड नाइट गुड नाइट गुड नाइट गुड नाइट थैंक यू सर